You're a grown man. He's a robot cat. Pull yourself together. Seriously. Hi. I'm Bobby. I am a robot cat. Welcome to my channel. I create clip and drama commentary from mostly small creator communities. Let's have a look. Well, where do I even begin? When we last left Lord Farquaad, she was whinging on about Amy Duggar King. And ever since, there has been no shortage of dramas. First up, the impossible bird is back on her Instagram rages. Let us have a look at this bit from 2nd of February. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Hi. Greetings, Lord Farquaad. It's been a minute. How is everyone? Good? I hope you're good. I'm not going to be able to see your comments. And because uh, I have my light over here, so I don't, I can't see what you're saying. So if you see someone that's saying things that are rude or whatever, I'm not going to be like paying attention too much, but... Well, that lately, won't last long. A couple days, I've been feeling very... <laughs> this is a heavy topic, and I have been stuck in a heavy topic for months, and it's hard to uh, disconnect from those feelings. And I think about the people that are in this world, and I'm like, they can never disconnect from this. So I try to like push through that, and I'm like, yeah, like if they can't disconnect from this, like I shouldn't be so emotional or whatever, but it's, you know... You are not part of any of this. Of years at this point is really... It's disturbing. You had better be careful with that tapestry. I shall quit the entirety of YouTube if you ever lost your garments for any amount of time. And I don't know if I can adequately say this in a way that... I feel like I've been going up against a brick wall with some people, uh, specifically those people that were lied to by TLC about who the others were. And it's really unnerving to me that I do a job, and I'm trying to do a job, and I'm trying to report, and I spend a lot of time like putting content out, and I'm constantly um, I'm amazed by the people that I speak to and how manipulative they are and how cunning and how narcissistic they are. It's it's a world that I have never been a part of. I did not grow up in fundamentalism, so I'm going to be frank. Like I have not dealt with the kind of narcissism that's in this specific group of people. And Wait, men, have I've, we I've dropped the narrative you survived a cult? Only maybe one or two, I think, aren't narcissists. Uh, it's been a lot of men kind of pointing fingers at each other and everyone kind of like, well, they were worse than we were. I wasn't as bad as this guy. This guy is the one that's the really bad guy. And you know, it's it's sad because there's really no way to tackle a world like this because you want to know why nobody speaks out. I learned why. I learned why nobody shares. I learned why no one testifies. I learned why people cover for each other. Because if they come forward, their secrets get exposed too, and they all have secrets. They're all doing just horrible shit. And it's sad. It's really sad. And so one person comes forward and they testify against this person, but then they have their own shit in their own house that's just as bad. Or, and they don't report things to the police. So some of you guys were like, if you're reporting on something, why aren't you reporting this stuff to the police? Okay, I made a, video, a, a post a couple days ago about child abuse. Um, when I'm reporting about child abuse, the claims that I'm hearing about are 20 years old. So am I supposed to call the police about claims that are 20 years old and report child abuse 20 years ago? That's from secondhand, not from the actual person, but people that saw it or saw the bruises. Like, I can't report stuff that I was not a witness to and I don't have firsthand knowledge of. So Oh, no, I can't report this abuse. These, these claims are like 15, 20 years old. These people are adults. Many of them are adults. Um, but it doesn't change the fact that nothing might be able to be done legally, but maybe people knowing who these people are and what they're doing can hold people accountable. You know, this is absolutely not what you claimed at all. You can't force, I mean, the statute of limitations for child abuse isn't very big. The only one that has no statute is like murder. And then some states have limited ones for, or uh, longer ones for rape, but most are a couple years. And after that, like, it doesn't matter. You are backpedaling at an alarming rate. Literally. There's nothing that they can do. So it's, the statute of limitations is, is horrible for sure, but there's nothing I can do about a claim of someone getting beat up when they're five and they're 30 now. I can't do anything about that. I can't do anything about a girl saying that, you know, uh, there's creeps at a church and they're doing this and they're doing that. Like I, and she's 25 now that there's nothing I can do. Not only that, on top of that, I feel like people have become so brainwashed. Even people that watch content or watched the Duggars, they're so brainwashed by who they think these people are that when you actually sit down and get to know these people and you talk to them, like, we can sit there all day and be like, okay, this person's better than this person because this person is speaking out against you and Bob. But that's not really how it works. Like, just because one person speaks out doesn't mean that they're any better or any worse. It literally just means they're speaking out. There are definitely victims of the kids. The kids are the victims in this case. Most of them who are adults now that grew up with the Duggars, you know, some of them are still in the cult, some of them have left. Most of them are still, like, in this world. And it's, even if they're out of the world, they still have wholly problematic beliefs. Nothing is ever good enough, is it? 
And, you know, I, I try to see the best in everyone and I try to see like what's good in people. No, people you do not. Doubt. And it's, it's sad because even the people who claim that they want these things to end, they don't want to take the steps to end things. They don't want to change their own behavior. They don't want to admit that they were a part of the problem. They don't want to, even if they weren't part of the IBLP, they, want, they don't want to admit that they benefited from the IBLP. They benefited from the fame. They benefited from something. So they're only like in one breath, like angry because they got silenced or because the others were smearing them. But at the same breath, yes, they got smeared, but they're the whole plot of people. It's a, they're diseased in a way. Like the whole cult has created people that are so damaged and diseased that you don't even know uh, who's good and who's bad. And even the people that claim to be good aren't that great of people. It's, it's it hard. seems as though you That's simply want them all to be locked into a pit of vipers. That heal, that go through therapy. But those aren't, a lot of those people are not the ones that I'm talking to. I'm not talking. I mean, okay, admittedly, I have a lot of survivors that I speak to that are doing really good jobs in therapy. You cannot keep your stories together. And they're doing the best to break the cycles of abuse and take care of themselves. And I'm not talking about any one person. Don't tie connect any dots. I'm not shading anyone. I'm not calling anyone out. I'm literally speaking in general. If you're like sitting there, um, that is quite alarming. Back away, you wench from the depths like of lunacy. Anyways, if you have no sound, go back in and go back out. Um, but it's not just, it's not just the abuse. It's the massive misinformation. It's the amount of bad information these people have. And even people who are not in this world, like that are showing up in my comments that defend some of these teachings. I'm like, do you realize that what you're defending is actually false? It's not even based on the Bible. It's not even true. It's false. And you can't argue against these people because it's like they believe that this is true, even though it's not true. And I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm like, like, I'll, I will, okay, let's speak in very practical realities, okay? She then spends quite a bit of time arguing the Bible as a whole, confirming that her true intentions, aside from financial gain, is to punish Christians for their beliefs, regardless of the denomination or affiliation. So, no, we don't hate Jill and Derek again. You know, you know what, internet tour guide, you are one of those people. And I'm just going to call you out because you do this shit all the time in the comments. I don't love anyone that I report on, period. I'm not friends with these people. I'm not best friends with these people. I'm not their friends. I am not here to be anyone's friend. You can point out that people do that's wrong and seriously be truthful. I'm not here to play a violent game where I placate someone to pitch their narrative so that you like them. Derek and Jill are still homophobic. That doesn't change anything. Derek and Jill still have beliefs that don't actually align with the mainstream. That doesn't mean you, we hate someone. Why is it that people go from, I like you, I hate you. No, you know what? You, I have COVID and my spectrum kid was kind. I'm sorry to go COVID and I'm sorry that your kid is kind, but like. Wow, oh, you, you should you really stop people getting people right ass whole intoxicated and going ass. online. I'm someone's ass so that they can be, uh, so I can get information from them. Why? Why would I, it's, it's no different than Amy King Duggar or Duggar King, whatever you, it's no different. I wasn't gonna kiss her ass and delete comments or delete content. I wasn't gonna kiss her ass and, and do what she wanted. And that's the truth. That's the truth. I didn't, I'm not here to be someone's friend. And, and that's what I'm saying is that some of these people are so manipulative that they will try to befriend, befriend, uh, befriend you so that you will then play their game for them. And that you can, you do what they, like, she wanted to control me. She wanted to control my platform. She wanted to control like what I put out and how I said it. Like, is that what a friend would do? No, no, a friend doesn't do that. I was being used uh, for whatever reason, whether she wanted attention or clout or whatever. I caught her lying and I called her out on it repeatedly. She didn't like that. I specifically spoke to her about one person that she was telling me that she was aligning with herself privately. And I specifically told her about allegations of abuse by this person. And she flat out said to me, that's not true. She said, never, that would never happen. I had credible- Were you too drunk to remember you said two days ago she actually was upset with you for pretending to be her friend while pulling her financial records? Verifiable people, multiple people telling me about this abuse, multiple people like coming to me with information and she refused to listen to me. And when she aligned with that person, she got access to information from years ago that she might've wanted. But the truth is, is that she refused to listen to the truth, that there was kids that were being abused, that this person was hurting their kids, that this person did not such great things to their children. But instead it was your, no, the person that you're talking to is a liar. But it wasn't one person that told me this. If it was one person that was a liar, I would think, well, yeah, sure, one person is a liar, but it's not one person that was a liar. There was multiple people that came forward. And when she was able to get the information from that person, she didn't need me anymore. The truth is I knew more about what was going on in the Duggar's house than she did because she has no relationship with them. She would find out things from me about what was happening over there. Like that's- You true. literally just I finished saying that her. she was hiding she and denying information. And, that person, and, and like, in oh, the next right. breath you and say this. And the only wow. I was because they wanted to know who I was talking to that was telling them about them. So every one of these people has problems with manipulation. It's not a family member to me. So you're happy for Amy that she was going to deny this person was abusing their kids? That makes you happy? Because that's not literally what I would ever stand for. Like, I don't care if that person has information that they were close to the Duggars that they can give you uh, information about. Like, I would never align to someone that has that in their background and has multiple people telling you the same thing about them. Like, 
and then she put me in touch with them, and all that person did. But was to you did align with her. Who had information? Who my source was? They were so adamant about who my source was because they wanted to know who I got this information from. That's not normal. And then they spent weeks trying to convince me that they weren't like that when it was factually not true. I do. I am smarter than that. I figured out very quickly why he reached, why they reached out to Amy to have them put, be in touch with me. I realized very qu quickly the narrative that they were trying to run through me um, to try to get me to ignore things and, and not look into aspects about them. Because every person that was coming out publicly knew that there was a target on their back. And by coming out publicly against the buggers, they knew that their own crimes or their own actions could come out too. So that's why nobody tells on each other. I, Amy was not my source. I, and that's another thing. People are going off about how I released a video and so I'm, or put out text messages because Amy was lying about me. Amy was not my source. Um, I'm not mad at Amy. I don't like it when people lie. I don't just keep my text messages. I just literally don't delete my text messages. So it wasn't like I took these screenshots and saved them. I haven't deleted my whole chain of text messages with her. So all I had to do was scroll back in my text messages to find the screenshots to prove that I wasn't lying. And you also had to share her personal finance situation with the whole of your brain defective following. The whole thing is we were friends. Maybe uh, it was friendly and it appeared friendly and maybe publicly I said she was my friend, but looking back, we were not friends because that's not how friends treat each other. And I don't use people. Like I genuinely pur purchased clothes from her because I wanted to support her, not because I wanted to kiss ass. I felt bad for her. I felt like she deserved a break. I wanted to offer her some support because she wasn't getting that. Like that was it. Oh, how we rewrite history. Yeah, I was just trying to be transparent because she was supposed to be in the narrative. You also have a time like she machine, I see. She was from the beginning and tell people why she suddenly had like a change of heart. And it all started because she couldn't, she got backlash about the backwards Barbie thing. And that's the beginning of it. And that was it. Like, she got a couple bad reviews on her Google thing. And then she's putting me in touch with people. That person's trying to figure out who my sources are. And then she's telling me that, you know, uh, I don't even know. And I said to her, like, did you know that this person has this in their background? No, that's not true. That's not true. That would never be true. So you can't claim to be against something like abuse and then ignore abuse. It's just, that's not how it works. Like, even if the person I spoke to was the nicest person in the whole world, and even if they were very cordial or whatever, it doesn't mean that they can't be like very manipulative and cunning and uh, doing this You switch purpose. between Amy knowing of abuse and Amy knowing nothing at all. I don't think she even has a relationship with them at this point. I think she was worried about her business. I think she is worried about her business still. And that's it, like, it's not this big thing where people think that we were somehow best friends. Um, but I told her that if she wanted to be who she was, then she needed to be who she was. Like, you can't go on your, on your platform and be snippy and rude and crude or snide and nasty and then want to play a good girl and be a uh, biblical uh, Barbie that pretends like you are loving and sweet and kind when that's not behind the scenes who you are. If you have Very much how your behavior you varies by platform. Forever, but then you, you play someone else on social media that like the Barbie thing that she did, I, I'll tell you that's who she is. Like that's her personality. She's sarcastic. She's goofy. She's funny. She doesn't put up with shit, but that's not how she acts on her social media. She acts like she's like, doesn't behave like that, which you can be sarcastic, you can be funny, you don't have to be the good girl all the time. Um, I just feel like maybe she feels like she has to be because of the people that follow her. I don't really know. Um, but, I don't know. That's one example. So that's just like literally one example. And, and she's not even the worst example. Like she's barely even like a scratch of an example because she's not the one that's doing this kind of stuff. Like. She's not the person that's abusing kids. She's not the one that's involved in this stuff. She has really zero reason to be in the story. But because she you just she said never mind. She's related to them, but um, I think of it this way. If one of my cousins got arrested <laughs> that I don't see, and I have a lot, I have 40 plus cousins, and I don't ever talk to them, but maybe once a year. Sometimes I haven't talked to my cousins in years. So if one of my cousins got arrested, I'm just gonna put this out there, and I find out that they're arrested, I'm unlikely to actually say anything publicly about it because I don't have that much of a relationship with them. So. There's really no reason for me. Your to entire to family dislikes you very much. I don't know if that makes sense, but I would be like unlikely to do that. I wouldn't, I just wouldn't. So, I mean, and it's no different. I can give it this way too. Like I have my own grievances with my own family, but I don't put out my grievances publicly. I don't really talk about my issues with my family publicly because why? It's. What about when you claimed your father physically abused you or your very public fight with a family member of Todd? Girl, Absolutely nobody loves you. Their kind of Christianity is not a kind of Christianity I want to associate with. That, like, let me be honest. I have a lot of Christian friends. I have a lot of uh, religious friends and I don't like, I have a religious family. I, my grandmother was very Catholic and I have aunts and uncles and cousins that are in, very into church and none of them make me feel like I'm a bad person because I don't go to church. None of them feel like they're superior to me because I am not a believer. But this brand of Christianity, these people, that's what they do. And I, they believe wholeheartedly that they are better than you. 
they believe that you are not as good as them. They believe that without God, it's impossible for you to do anything well. And they use that to make themselves feel better. She then whinges on for another half of an hour about Amy Duggar and religion. Before ultimately describing herself. Everybody has their own journey. But when we start using faith as a way to hurt other people and make people feel like they don't get to have, they're not equal to you or they're less than, when you start using faith to put other people down, to make other people feel like they're not as good as you, that's like using a weapon. It's using it to light a dagger because you have some sort of insecurity in your own life where you feel like you need to feel better than people. You need to feel like you know something that other people don't and you need to be better than other people. There's nothing good about making yourself feel like you're better than people. Like, you, why? Why do you need to point out uh, that other people... There's, and there's even a thing in the Bible, which I always think is, I don't know what the verse is, I don't know what book it's in, but I feel like all of these people should read that passage where they talk about, you know, don't point, point out the speck in somebody else's eye when you have like a, a pole in your eye. I don't, remember what, I don't know what the verse is. But you're spending all of this time pointing out other people's faults, making people feel like they're less than you, a log in your eye. Okay, so don't point out somebody, a speck in somebody's eye when you have a log in yours, right? How ironic. One would think that would be quite enough. Not our dear lord of the delusional self-importance. She went from that bile of horse shite directly to attempting to ruin the livelihood of Jessa C. Wilde. She first caught wind of the new sponsorship and had this to say, Jessa C. Wilde posted a new video containing sponsored content from Native, a skin and body care brand. The company promotes an inclusive brand that accepts all people. I don't know if Native knows about Jess's husband recently posting a video that was anti-LGBTQ. In the video, he told people to pray away their feelings and not act out. Practices like this are harmful to the LGBTQ community and le- Thoughts and s- by LGBTQ youth. They also don't appear to be anti-women nor for child abuse which is curious because Jess's family promotes blanket training and uses a rod to discipline their children. I've reached out to Native for a comment on these details and haven't heard back. It would not be long after that Catherine announced rather gleefully that she heard back from the company, and had successfully managed to get them to drop Jessa from their promotions. Wow, you jealous cow, she received much backlash, and in a now deleted post, had this to say, I will always stand up for the LGBTQ. Every influencer makes money a variety of ways. Jessu is not going to go broke over the loss of a deal, YouTube ads and pays way more than a brand deal will ever pay. There is no way to pull her YouTube. Period. So stop coming over here and screaming at me. I will stand up for what I believe, always. I did not contact Katie's sponsor. I shared information that I received from someone who did. I did not tell anyone to contact her sponsors, brands have a responsibility to vet influencers. For those saying that I wouldn't like losing a brand deal. I have lost deals by brands. It's part of this business. I also don't take brand deals anymore because of how fickle companies are, when it comes to controversy. Catherine, you are a real piece of shite. Wow. In her true form, she first attempts to deflect attention off of her actions by claiming the Duggars are spamming her phone number with car sales and missionary inquiry. However, the majority felt that the accounts of events were a creation by Catherine to distract from her actions toward Jessa. This clearly frustrated Catherine who first took to Instagram to prove the texts were real and, ultimately doubled down on her reporting of the Duggar girl to the sponsor. And then for those of you that were mad about me reaching out to a sponsor of Jessa, it is not uncommon for people that report on people to reach out to sponsors about specific relationships with influencers specifically if the brand does not align with that person that's not you did this because you are a hateful cow but i mean i haven't done this in a long time but with jessa it was specifically because the if you go to their instagram page it's very clear the kind of message they're trying to send that they're an inclusive brand the brand is also pretty specifically sold at target which is another outlet that the duggars hate 
So I brought all of this up to that person that knows the Duggars and they flat out said that the brand wouldn't be a good match for Jessa. So you're blaming someone else now? Because Jessa's fans wouldn't want to associate with a brand that is pro LGBTQ plus. They said, it's not a bad thing for a brand to cut ties over aligning misalignment. How do you know she is not trying to change her life as you demand that either. she should? Because this person said her fans would be outraged at anybody because they feel the same way that she does. They don't want to align with companies that are compassionate towards them. You did they not have a source. A because they you have did this because she is a beautiful woman attempting to live her own life. And, because of their and you are a living cartoon character people. with a terrible attitude. That's who the Duggars are. So, and that's who their fan base is. And if that bothers you, I don't know what else to say. But that, that's the fact. And they also pointed out that any other people would have noticed it too. Other people would have reached out to them. I just happened to be fast at doing it. You madam, are a complete horse's ass. Well, this simply did not work. The backlash continued. So, in her most predictable move yet, Catherine streamed, and then deleted, a tearful whinge fest to which she attempted to yet again use her own son to garner sympathy while demeaning anyone who attempted to console her. Credit to Llama Girl on Twitter. Drives me crazy. Drives me crazy, and I don't bring up my son because it's his business and it's his life and it's his privacy. But like, dude, is not telling someone that um, you're a for you're you're a terrible person and you're throwing all the teachers under the bus. Like, dude, I know that there's good teachers out there. <laughs> and it doesn't change the fact that oh, you have a nephew that's autistic. Great, like you aren't living this life every day. You're not a parent of a child with special needs, you don't get it. It's like so easy to seriously like say that you're a teacher and think that you can relate because you can't. You're not living the life, you're not with the child every day, you don't be. You know, it's like I don't talk about him and then you say I'm neglecting him and then when I do talk about him, I'm only doing it to serve myself. And I'm not trying to serve myself. Oh, it's none of your business what it is. It's his business. All I was trying to say is we have a medication we're trying to get approved. It's none of your business what it's for. It's none of your business what it is. It's his business. You are a fucking lunatic. Never mind. After a very swift recovery from this deflection failure, she took to her Instagram to create more obsessed content on Josh Duggar. In this final addition to a pile of Catherine shite, she makes this disturbing post. Warning, tis quite offensive. They state in multiple teachings that if a victim does not cry out to God for help then they are equally guilty for the assault that happens to them, to dedicate their body to God. When someone dedicates their body to God, the IBLP states their body wasn't molested but it was God's body, therefore, they were not harmed, which is a huge lie and horrific, being assaulted is like a vaccination against future attacks. The IBLP teaches that the assault teaches the child to fight and become immune to assault in the future. The assault teaches the child to hate homosexuality, this is applied if the perpetrator is of the same sex. The child is blamed for having evil companions. Therefore, the assault is their fault for having bad friends, this is a small portion of what is taught in the anger resolution seminar which Jim Bob Duggar says he took Josh to after he assaulted his sisters, given that the victim is blamed for everything, imagine what the Duggars told their daughters. The IBLP says that they do not teach or condone abuse. However, this teaching is promoting abuse by giving perpetrators a way out for their offenses. Without a crystal ball would like to thank multiple survivors of Bill Gothard for sharing this handout with us. Swipe left to read the full handout from the Anger Resolution Seminar. This is a seminar that Jim Bob Duggar actively promotes on his platform. Is there ever a time that this woman is not obsessively speaking about the harm that has happened to these children? 
She spends more time retelling victim stories in detail than she seems to spend with her own family. Wow! I'm certain that more shall have taken place before you see this video. Catherine is always hard at work, offending the entire internet. This concludes this special edition of Community News. Much gratitude for you all. Cheers.